So like I was saying, in the Word of God, we have a promise from Jesus Christ, and this is found in Matthew chapter 6, that there is a hidden treasure. It's a treasure that is not stored up here on earth. It's a treasure that cannot be seen with the eyes or touched with the hands. It is a treasure that we store up for ourselves in heaven. And um, Jesus tells us that when it comes to life and having things and gaining things and uh, working for things and striving for things, and by things I mean money, power, prestige, those things that the world think is is super valuable. Um, those of us who are children of God, we know that those kind of things really have no eternal value. They really have no eternal significance. And, uh, of course, we've stated this many times before, and uh, I often tell you that when we, when we pass away and when we leave this mortal body, that nothing that we have attained here will be able to take with us. We have to leave it behind for whoever is able to get hold of it. So storing up earthly treasure really is, uh, in a lot of cases, a waste of a lot of time and energy for the Christian. For the Christian, our time, our attention, and our affections our, are better put to use storing up heavenly treasure. And there are some great promises in the sixth chapter in the book of Matthew, but um, I'm only going to go through a few of them. Jesus said, For wherever your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Wherever your treasure is, there will your heart be also. What is your treasure? Is your treasure money? Is it a social position? Is it power and prestige, um, what is your true treasure? Well, the way that we understand ourselves and how we operate in daily life is to understand what we are trying to gain in our lives and where, that we, where we are trying to store up treasure. Because wherever we're working hardest to store up treasure for ourselves, that's where our heart really is. So it can be a great revelation for each and every one of us as individuals to understand uh, if our efforts and affections are being put to good use and being put in the right places uh, as a child of God. And um, so I'm going to read a little bit from the sixth chapter of Matthew. I won't read the whole thing here, just from the 19th verse through the 25th. And, um, sorry about that. Matthew 6 19, it says this Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body 
is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for the body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment, or clothing? Take no thought. Don't worry. Don't fret. For your life. What ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, what ye shall wear, Is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment or clothing? What are the most important things in life? Is it the acquisition of material goods? Or is it relationships? Relationships between us and other people, but most importantly, our relationship with our Heavenly Father, our Savior Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. All right. Now, I wanted to talk quickly about um, this earthly treasure that most people are trying to gain. Most people have their heart and their mind set on gaining as much earthly wealth, earthly treasure as possible. And they have that in their mind to do so because that's what the world says is important. That you have to you have to prepare yourself at an early age to get the kind of job that will make you secure and to prepare for your old age. Uh, but you know what? It doesn't matter how much money you gain, how much worldly treasure in the form of money or power or any of those other things that you can gain in your life. Because when we talk about earthly treasure, it can be yanked out from under us at any moment. In fact, most hardworking middle class people, they will work very hard their entire working career in order to, uh, you know, just to provide the basics for their family, to buy a house as an investment for their old age. And um, probably most people, about the only investment that they have, you know, most of us cannot invest in stocks and bonds and we don't have IRAs and all of that. We're hoping Social Security will stay intact. So for most of us, by the time we reach old age and we begin to have health issues, much of what we have gained and worked so hard for in our lives suddenly begins to slip away. And within just a couple of months, you can end up owing more than you have ever saved throughout your entire life. 
But Jesus says that's not something that we should be concerned about as Christians. As long as we live our lives in a responsible way, work as if we were doing our work for the Lord, that as God takes care of the lilies of the valley who are arrayed in greater splendor than Solomon ever was, and just like the sparrows who don't work, and yet God provides food for them every day, and he provides for their every need. He says, in the same way, God is ready to provide for us, and that we should never be anxious over earthly treasure. We should never be stressed out and worried about money, position, what kind of job we have. You know, there's a big mistake among many Christians uh, that we absolutely, and the world propagates this, uh, that you absolutely, especially nowadays, you absolutely have to finish school and go to college so that you can get a good job to be able to do, you know, all the things that the world tells us we should be doing. And, um, you know, what if you fall into that groove that most people do where you can't afford to go to school and Nobody's going to help you get there. Nobody's going to help you go to college. What do you do then? Well, the principles that are taught in God's Word is that we have to learn to be content with the treasure, the earthly treasure that has already been given to us, in order for God to increase our earthly treasure. Now that's one side of the coin. In order to be blessed by God, you've got to learn to be responsible and grateful for what he has already given us. So some of us uh, may be living, you know, paycheck to paycheck and sometimes even a little, a little past paycheck to paycheck. Jesus tells us that's no reason for concern because that's not what is eternally the most important thing in our life. The most important things in our life are the eternal treasures, the heavenly treasures that we lay up for ourselves. And here's the problem that we run into. We run into a form of covetousness or uh, a, a selfish desire for human gain, a selfish desire for earthly things. And we run into this disguised as religion. So I'm really not talking about today, I'm really not talking about all the Billions of people outside the church who have fallen for the deception that they have to gain as much earthly treasure as they possibly can in their life. I'm talking about Christians who have been convinced that earthly treasure is more important than heavenly treasure. And if you remember the teachings of Jesus Christ, he warned his disciples and he warns us in his word to beware the leaven of the scribes and Pharisees. What is leaven? Leaven is yeast that you put into bread and it penetrates and, and the bread rises. Otherwise, if you try to make bread without yeast, you end up with a cracker. 
or a flatbread. Jesus said, Beware that you don't fall into the same trap that the scribes and the Pharisees have fallen into. And these were the, the spiritual leaders of his time. Because they had fallen into the trap where that they followed the law of God in their body without fulfilling the will of God in their heart. So they gave, they gave to the church, they gave a tenth of everything that they possessed, they did good deeds, they, uh, you know, were involved in everything that went on in the temple or the church. Um, but the reason that they were doing it was all so that they could gain earthly treasure, and not so that they could lay up heavenly treasure. So why did the scribes and Pharisees work so hard to do what they did? So that they could get the praise of men, so that they could get as much worldly wealth as possible, and so that they could be rewarded by their fellow human beings. Remember Jesus said. About these kind of people. He said. Verily verily. They have their reward. The kind of people who. Um, put on a great show of religion. And at that time. Who enlarged the borders of their robes. And gave great prayer, public prayers and oratories and um, made themselves look important in the eyes of the common people. He said they none of them were doing it for God. None of them were doing it as appreciation or affection towards the Heavenly Father. They were doing it in order to get to build up their earthly treasure and not their heavenly treasure. So they were seeking the praise of men. They were seeking worldly wealth, lots of money, and they were seeking earthly rewards. They wanted the, the praise and the rewards of the people around them more than they wanted the appreciation of God. Okay, we move to... The next part here is that each and every one of us throughout our life, we get to choose which kind of treasure we're going to store up for ourselves for eternity. God has given, the, given us complete freedom to choose which kind of treasure you want to store up. You want to store up for yourself Millions of dollars in the bank and uh, all the amenities that go with it, the, you know, the big house and the car. And It's amazing to me that when I was a kid, the average size home was about 1,100 square feet, 11 to 1,200 square feet. And that was if you were, you know, middle class or upper middle class. 11 to 1,200 square feet. Most, my grandfather, he raised four kids in a house that was about 1,100 square feet. And for most of us here today, most of us were raised in families anywhere from three to eight children, sometimes more, in a house with only two or three bedrooms. And those bedrooms often no bigger than ten foot by ten foot. And 
Nobody ever saw anything wrong with that. Nowadays, if you watch uh, those programs on the networks like uh, the Do-It-Yourself Network and Home and Gardening and stuff like that, when a young couple decides they're going to have a baby and they've already got a 1,600 square foot house, suddenly they need a 2,400 square foot house. And they're willing to go in, into such debt and pay such a high price in order to gain the extra square footage that they think they need. And it's just it boggles my mind that uh, whereas most of us were raised in a, in a home where our family was small and tight, uh, you know, a, a small house and a very, we were tight together. You had no choice to be close to your brothers and sisters because they slept right next to you. But now people are living in large homes where each child has their own room and they're off doing their own thing and that's where they play, that's where they eat, that's where... And they're just cut off from the rest of the family. Where is the value in that? What kind of treasure can you get out of that? And... Uh, you know, it's just one of those things that kind of gets to me when I think about it. And I also think about this, that when my first three children were between the ages of uh, three to six years old, for about three or four years, we lived in a in an 8 by 36 travel trailer that I bought and um, I added an extra room onto and we were perfectly happy and content it was tight quarters but we were perfectly happy and content because basically that's just where we slept everything else you know the kids all Everything else that was done was outside. So it wasn't like we were constantly, daily, 24 hours a day trying to live in this cramped space. We were happy and content with what we had. And this is what learning to value what is real treasure and learning to lay up for ourselves heavenly treasure. This is what it's all about. It's learning to be content with what you already have and being thankful for any gain that you may, take, may get afterward. So we talk about our earthly treasure. Earthly treasure can be described as um, things that are seen. Anything that can be seen touched. When we place value on the things that we can see, we have to remember that the things that we can see really have no eternal value. You can have the biggest house or as many houses. Many people have, you know, their vacation, their regular home and their vacation homes. The home, the backup home, the vacation homes, the home for work and the home for play. But you know what? When this life is over and we stand before God for the judgment or before Jesus for our rewards, All of that gets left behind. There's no eternal significance and no eternal value to it. And you know what? When you get caught up in 
trying to lay up for yourself earthly treasure, it's never enough. It's never enough, no matter how much you make. For the majority of people, until you become a child of God and you learn to be content in, in the state that you find yourself, in the condition that you find yourself, you'll find that earthly treasure is never enough. No matter how much you get, you always want more. A lot of us started out with jobs at places like McDonald's. My first job was washing dishes by hand at a truck stop because they didn't have a dishwasher, uh, an automatic dishwasher at that time. So we did it the old fashioned way. We wash dishes by hand. And um, I was at that time in my life perfectly content with the money that I made washing dishes by hand. Nowadays, if a young man of 15, 16 years old was asked to wash dishes by hand, first of all, he probably wouldn't even take the job. He wouldn't appreciate the small amount of money that he got paid because he'd always be thinking, man, I could work someplace that has the automatic dishwasher. And I'm not saying that I'm, I'm any better than anybody else and that I haven't made mistakes in my life about laying up earthly treasures. What I'm saying is in that point in my life, when I was that young. I didn't have many needs. And so I was perfectly content with what I got. It was only later on when I started making quite a bit more money that I began to want more money. The more stuff we get, the more that we want. And we have to train ourselves using God's Word in order to understand and to appreciate everything that God loans to us in our lives. So, to understand earthly treasure, we have to understand that it has no eternal value, that there will never be enough of it, no matter how hard you work, no matter how hard you try. It only gives you a false sense of security. People think if I have a lot of things and a lot of money in the bank, then no matter what happens in my life, um, we'll be able to financially deal with it. Well, guess what? One hospital visit, one operation, one round of cancer, there goes everything that you've worked for your whole life. So it really gives you, earthly treasure really gives you a false sense of hope for the future. When we think about our future and where we will be in five years or ten years from now or twenty years from now, if you are dependent upon laying up earthly treasures in your life, you're going to be sadly disappointed. Because at some point, it all gets taken away. It may not be until you die. But at the point that you die, everything that you've worked so hard for here on earth can be suddenly removed from you. And what's left? That's why heavenly treasure is so important. Heavenly treasure does not depend on the value of the dollar. Heavenly treasure does not depend on what kind of house you live in, what kind of car you drive, how much money you have in your pocket, where you fit in the social circles. So we move to 
choosing heavenly treasure instead of choosing earthly treasure. When you choose heavenly treasure, you are choosing things that cannot necessarily be seen, but they are the things that have the most value. They're not the things that you can immediately see, but they are the things that have the most value. The things that have the most value in life are not how many gifts or the quality or the cost of gifts we can give our children. The great treasure of life is how much love and affection and attention we can share with our children throughout the entirety of life. And that's just an example. It works the same way with uh, between spouses, between families. You'll find as you grow older and older, family is the most important treasure that we can have here on earth. And it is also a heavenly treasure because the love that we share as families, and I'm talking about whether it's our physical family or our church family, the love and the fellowship that we share together here gets transferred into the kingdom. That's heavenly treasure. We get to take that with us. The fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, gentleness, meekness, faith, self-control, those kind of things we get to take with us. Those are the kind of treasures we should be building. And um, the riches, glories, and pleasures of God's kingdom. That's basically what we should be laying up for ourselves as in the form of of treasure or security for the future. The riches, the glories, and the pleasures of God's kingdom. See, here on earth, there's a totally different perspective about what is rich, what we should glory over, what we should be proud of, and what is pleasure? You know? We always, when my kids were growing up, we always got the greatest kick out of just going out in, to the desert and having a picnic. Cost a little bit of gas money. Whereas many families think that the only possible great vacation you can have is to go to Aruba and sip out of cups with tiny umbrellas. <laughs> See, you can build the greatest treasure with the least amount of money or effort. It's all how, what kind of treasure you choose to lay up for yourself and where you're going to store it. Are you going to store it here on earth where moth eats it and where rust corrupts it? Or are you going to store it up in heaven where not even a thief can take it away? So we have the riches, the glories, and the pleasures of God's kingdom. We have our eternal security. And the first of those eternal securities, of course, is salvation. You have to have the salvation of Jesus Christ. You must be what's called born again. If you have not yet received Jesus Christ as your Savior, then you really don't have a hope for the future. You really don't have a real treasure stored up 
for eternity. We need to be getting prepared now for what God has in store for us a thousand years from now. And the only way we can do that is if we are one of his adopted children. The only way to become one of God's adopted children is to accept the gift of salvation that comes through the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And it's not complicated. It's always being offered to us. And when the Holy Spirit comes and speaks to your heart and mind and lets you know that you are indeed a sinner in need of repentance, when you indeed need to make that 180 degree change in your life, and you are convinced that the only way you can do that is with God's help, that's when you know it's time to accept the free gift that Jesus has been trying to give to you the whole time. The free gift of eternal salvation, eternal life. So that comes first. For your eternal security, you must have salvation, and then the other things will fall. And then finally, in order to lay up heavenly treasure instead of earthly treasure, we have to be able to trust God for our future security. We have to be able to totally trust God for our future security. Most Christians are not able to do that yet. It's sad to say, but most Christians are not able to do that yet. Most of us are not, are not able to just relax and trust God for what life is going to be like once we reach the point where we're senior citizens, once we begin to have health problems, once we begin... Uh, we begin to have the kind of life where outgo exceeds income. You see, when we're laying up heavenly treasure, we're not depending on our IRA for God to supply our needs. We're not depending on Social Security for God to, to supply our need. When you truly understand what laying up heavenly treasure is, you're depending on God himself to supply your needs in ways that you could never imagine. I've, over the past couple of months, lost a lot of income because of the events that have transpired in my uh, in my family and in my father's going home to be with the Lord. And yet, I don't sit around and sweat about where the money is going to come from. Because I have too much experience in knowing that God always provides my needs may not be in a way that I can think of. You know, I could sit around and stress about it if I wanted to. Why isn't there more work? Why, why does this have to happen? Why does that have to happen? Oh, what's going to happen to me in another two months? I could sit around and stress about it, but I refuse to. Because I know I have chosen to lay up for myself heavenly treasure. And Jesus promised that I can relax. I can be at ease. Because if God cares for his creation, the lilies of the valley, the sparrows, by providing their every need, how much more does he love me? 
how much more does he want to provide for me? Now that is a great security. That is a wonderful, wonderful promise from God to know that I can totally trust him for my future security. Even though I don't have any form of retirement set up, I don't have an IRA, I don't have anything like that. I know that God will provide whatever need may arise in my life. And I hope that you realize that also in your life. Okay. The next aspect of choosing our treasure, laying up heavenly treasure, is to set our heart upon God's approval, not upon human beings' approval. Don't set your heart on your spouse's approval, on your neighbor's approval, you may even get to the point where you have such power and prestige like uh, Mr. Obama or Mr. Romney and you are depending on an entire country's approval. But don't do it. When you depend on the approval of man, you will always be let down. The approval of man can change instantly. We've all had it happen in our life where we have somebody who is just an extremely close friend that, you know, well, what do they call them now? Bestie? You have a friend that's a bestie? A BFF? Well, you know what? Besties can turn on you in a moment. They can be your bestie today and tomorrow your greatest enemy. When we depend on the approval of man instead of the approval of God, watch out. Your bestie may become your worstie. So we need to, in our lives, we need to adjust our inner pleasures and desires and affections. We need to learn to be content with what we have, and we need to understand that what we have can never be corrupted and never be stolen from us. And I'll try to move along here real quick. Talk about the evidence of having heavenly treasure. How do I know if I am seeking heavenly treasure and if I have heavenly treasure? Well, Jesus said, where your heart is, wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. Right? Where's your heart today? Anybody place bets on the game today? I know we're not supposed to, but sometimes people do. And today you might have your heart set that if a certain team wins, you get a little bit of cash. Well, it can be that way for uh, the way that we live our lives and how we're laying up our treasures. Where are, where are your cares, your fears, your hope, and your trust? What is it today that you are worried about that you're fearful about, that you have hope for in the future, and that you're putting your trust in. This is how we know where our treasure really is. You see, we can hide our treasure from other people if we're seeking nothing but earthly treasure as Christians, but we cannot hide it from God. And we cannot, and we should not hide it from our from ourselves. We need to know what we're up to. You know, your heart needs to know what your head is up to, and vice versa. And the only way we can do that is by examining the evidence. What is the evidence? 
what you're worried about, what you're afraid of, what you have your hope and your trust set on. So if we understand that we are seeking the true heavenly treasure and that that's where we're going to store our treasure, then everyone understands that a compass always points north. Right? If you take a, no matter what type of compass it is, it's magnetic. And that magnetic pointer will always point to the magnetic north pole of the earth. And um, so when we, exa when we talk about examining the evidence of where our treasure lies, understand that it's really easy to figure out. In the same way that a compass always points north, So our hearts and minds will always point toward what is really in the depth of our heart. If you are working to build up your earthly reserves, your earthly treasure, that's where your treasure lies, that's where your heart is. Do you feel today, do you feel a fear of loss or do you have a hope of gain? Because that's one of the evidences of where your heavenly treasure is, or where your treasure is. If it's earthly treasure you're seeking or heavenly treasure. If you have a fear of loss, if you're afraid you're going to lose anything more, then I'm afraid you've been involved in trying to store up earthly treasure. But if you have a hope of gain, if you know in your heart that God is going to give you an increase, no matter what your situation looks like right now, you know in your heart that God is going to give you a blessed increase, then you know that you've been seeking the right thing. And you've been laying up treasure in heaven instead of here on earth. The next evidence is, um, are you caring for the eternal or for the natural? Do you have more concern over what's happening here on earth? The things that you can see and touch and smell and hear? Or do you have more concern about the things that are eternal. Relationships, love, peace, and especially our relationship with our Savior Jesus Christ and our true Father, God Himself. And then finally, once again, we go back to trusting God to supply our needs. Are you trusting God to supply your needs? Or are you thinking within yourself, I've got to go to school, I've got to get a better job, I've got to work harder, I've got to work longer. I've... Jesus said, don't seek for these kind of things because these are the kind of things that the Gentiles or the heathens seek after. The things that when all, life is over and everything is all said and done really don't have any eternal value. We need to trust God totally to supply our needs moment by moment, day by day, and He will never let us fail. He will always provide for as long as we're laying up treasure in heaven. Okay, and I'm going to skip over a couple of things here. To hurry up and finish. In these verses, Jesus um, talks about uh, testing our treasure. Um, when, I, when I think about testing our treasure, whether we 
have laid up heavenly or earthly treasure? Uh, what kind of treasure do we truly possess? Is it earthly or is it heavenly? Jesus mentioned uh, in these verses of Scripture, he said he mentioned the words alms, prayers, fastings, and rewards. He said, don't be like the scribes and Pharisees who give their worship and offer their public prayers and do this public fasting thing mm -hmm. where that they put on this big show where, oh, I'm so hungry and, oh, because I'm fasting right now, I am so righteous and so holy and you guys should be able to see just how righteous and holy I am. And give me the reward that I seek, which is your attention and your affection. Jesus said, don't be like that. If you offer up alms, which is worship or giving to God. If you offer up prayers to God. If you fast. If you are seeking reward. then." It's for only one of two reasons. Either you are doing these things for the applause of men, or you are doing them for the approval of God. Where are you laying up your treasure? Well, think about it. Are you doing the good things you do at church for the approval of other human beings? For the applause of the people around you? Or are you doing them for the express approval of God himself? That is the true test of where we're storing up our treasure. So, to sum it up and to finish up, as Christians, we cannot allow ourselves to be caught up with where a lot of other Christian groups are going and a lot of other church bodies, church families are headed because many of them are seeking earthly treasure and that's where they're laying up their treasure. They're laying up their treasure in their church, so-called church. They're laying up their treasure in their homes, in their car, in their bank account. And they will eventually have nothing to show for. We need to lay up for ourselves our treasures in heaven. Where the moth cannot eat, the rust does not corrupt, and the thief can never break through and steal. Where we can have utter confidence, absolute security, and total hope that God will provide our every need. The most important, when I read those verses, the most important thing that pops out to me is uh, in verse 21, where Jesus said, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. What is your life all about? What are your life wrapped around? Uh, what are the things that you value most? What are the rewards that you expect uh, that you expect out of life? Wherever you have stored up your treasure, that's where your heart is today. Either you're storing up treasure here on earth, or you're storing it up in heaven. If you're storing it here on earth, you can expect that without a shadow of doubt, you are going to lose the all. If you're storing it up in heaven, it's yours for all. Let's stand. Any word before we dismiss this morning?
Heavenly Father, we pray that you would teach us in our minds, Lord, how to lay up our treasures in heaven. That, Lord, in our hearts, our deepest desire, our thoughts, our intents, and our motives would be to lay our hands upon those things that have the most value, the things that last forever. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.